Hello, this is David welcoming you to a new D&D History Hub podcast. My Uncle Bruce, my mother's brother, he was a quiet, calm, and intelligent man who was held in some reverence by the rest of the family, including, especially, me. You see, Bruce had served in World War II as a combat infantry soldier with the British Army's 30 Corps, landing under enemy fire at Sword Beach in Normandy on June the 6th, 1944. And he went on to serve on active duty until war's end in May 1945. During those few months, Bruce experienced some very nasty fighting, including uh, the Battle of the Falaise Gap, then into Belgium and in Holland as part of the uh, infantry component of Operation Market Garden, the um, A Bridge Too Far story. And finally, crossing the Rhine into Germany itself. Remarkably, he was never physically wounded. Just good luck, he would say. No skill involved, lad. he, He was a Yorkshireman. Only one thing got Bruce wound up when it came to conversations about the war, and that was any criticism of his former commander-in-chief, General Leiterfield Marshal Bernard Montgomery, commander of the 21st Army Group. Now, there's a lot to criticise about Monty. He didn't play nicely with uh, American and other Allied commanders, including his own army, the British, and he could be tactless, self-aggrandizing, egotistical, vain and arrogant. You know, choose your epithet. But such criticisms always bring to my mind a line from that Tom Waits song. Hold on. Go ahead. Call the cops. Well, what do you expect? Nice guys don't win wars. Being the boss of an army in combat must be one of the toughest gigs on the planet. In World War Two, where the whole deal was enormously magnified, it was a bitter and a vicious war. I mean, just check out some of the opposition. German commanders such as uh, Rommel, Guderian, Manstein, Runstead, Modal, Kesselring, Heinrichi. These were as tough and ruthless as they come. Nice guys aren't going to charm them into surrender. Now, Monty was no kind of pattern or old Wingate. He wasn't a blood and guts maverick, and neither was he an unconventional innovator. His command methods were centred on winning big set-piece battles, in large part by gaining the trust and confidence of his soldiers, but also training them hard and long so that they knew their role in the fight to come. For my Uncle Bruce, all of Monty's perceived faults could be overlooked because, in Bruce's experience, Monty cared about his soldiers. Bruce said, we knew who he was. He made it clear what he wanted of us. And he did his best to ensure that the army took care of us, he'd say. Monty took the time to visit soldiers in forward areas and prioritised, where possible, their needs. Things like ensuring the mail from home got through food and drink were available, that there was plenty of ammo and guns to do the job, and that should the worse happen, their bodies would be reverently treated and respectfully interred. This wasn't all altruism from Monty. It was also a tactic. Writing in his uh, 1958 autobiography, The Memoirs of uh, 
Field Marshal the Viscount Montgomery of Alamein, KG. And this is a battered old copy of that book I've got, uh, published in 1958. And uh, so I haven't sort of been around a bit. Uh, and uh, Uncle Bruce actually gave this book to me. So anyway, writing in this uh, by, uh, autobiography, Monty says it is essential to understand that battles are won in the hearts of soldiers. He writes, When Britain goes to war, the ranks of her armed forces are filled with men, they were mostly men in those days, from civil life, who were not soldiers, sailors or airmen by profession, and who never wanted to be. The young man today reads the newspapers. He goes to the cinema, and he sees how people live and behave in other countries. He has the radio, he has the television, his visual world is therefore extensive, and he can now measure his everyday environment in a way impossible in the Victorian era. He is daily taking in information and relating it to himself. He can think, he can appreciate, and he is definitely prepared to criticise. He wants to know what's going on and what you want him to do, and why and when. He wants to know that in the doing of it, his best interests will be absolutely secure in your hands. The British soldier, he says, responds to leadership in a most remarkable way, and once you have won his heart, he will follow you anywhere. So that's from Monty's biography. He actually also makes uh, similar points. In um, this book, um, Montgomery of Alamein, A History of Warfare, which um, is uh, quite a splendid book, actually. It's, it's very interesting, and it's um, you know, beautifully illustrated with maps and, uh, and everything. But Monty comes back to some of those themes in here. So, Monty made a priority of good communication with and care for his soldiers, not out of sentimentality, or because he was a gregarious, warm-hearted, outgoing kind of guy. He did it as a tactic. These men would fight better if they were kept in the loop, and so for Monty, it was a win-win situation. My Uncle Bruce um, fought through and survived some of the toughest battles of World War II. He had absolute loyalty to Monty, whether it was a tactic or not on the field marshal's behalf. And even after uh, Bruce's soldiering days were done and he could reflect on his experiences, he maintained that loyalty to Monty because Monty's style of generalship made a priority of good communication with and care of his troops. Uncle Bruce wasn't naive or stupid. He knew Monty's care and attention to his soldiers was driven by the practical consideration of the best way to win battles, or at worst, not to lose them. I know Bruce knew what was going on because he actually gave me that uh, autobiography of Monty's, which spells it all out, everything that he does. But it didn't make any difference to Bruce, because it worked. All those uh, treatments that uh, Monty talks about, it kept Bruce and his comrades, or many of them, alive. And for that, he was grateful. And to his last days, Bruce had an abiding respect for Field Marshal Montgomery. So thank you for listening. Um, I'd be very grateful if you uh, like this video to give us a thumbs up like and um, to please consider subscribing. So thank you very much and goodbye.